Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Really? What's up? What's up? It is another day that the Lord has made. <laughs> I, obviously, I'm going to rejoice. I don't know about you, but I am excited in Jesus' name. Um, we are going to give just a couple minutes for people to go ahead and start um, joining us. Uh, jump on in. Uh, Wives, please, please, please grab your husbands. Husbands, you better grab your wives. <laughs> and single people, grab Jesus. All right? <laughs> Kick your feet up, everybody. Um, this is date night. This is marriage on blast. Hashtag reset. We are going to get it in on tonight. It's a good one. Um, God blessed on the last segment. Um, it was an awesome time even with um, Bishop Gerard and his lovely wife on that following Hi, Tuesday. Guys. Uh, God bless you both. Uh, God bless New Hope. Um, God bless just the body of Christ all across the world. Um, so we are Facebook, Hi, Facebook Periscope. Periscope, what to do. Um, like I said, what we want you guys to do while everybody is joining us, while everybody's jumping in, we are so excited. God bless everybody. Nicole, God bless you, sis. Thank you. Um, yeah. We want you guys to press that blue button purple button, red button, whatever it is, whatever your color is, we want you to press it and it's called share. Share, share again, share again. And even when you view it, press that little guy. Periscope, press it. Let's get it in. We want to we want to go up all across <laughs> the nation, man, on this. So we want you to share. If you think of anybody, go ahead and and, and share it with them. Um, and ask them to share it with the next person and with the next person. We want to go ahead and we want God to be in every marriage every relationship, uh, single people. We want you, God, to just dwell in your hearts. Uh, we want you to go ahead and absorb this information. It is going to be good on the night. Once again, we're giving everybody time to go ahead and jump in. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. So uh, we'll give you just a, just a, just a few seconds um, for everybody to go ahead and just get comfortable, get their feet up, get your popcorn, get you, you know, your water, get your, your bottle of water. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say drink, but some people going to take that and run with it, so we ain't going to do that. So um, if you're going to get a drink, make sure it's non-alcoholic, uh, all right? God bless you. Um, so it is, I am so excited, man. I'm so excited on the night um, with God's people. Juanita, what's going on, sis? Yes, ma'am. I miss you, miss you, miss you. You and your sister. God bless y'all. Um, so we are going to get it in on the night. Uh mm -hmm. If you if you missed last week, last week was awesome. Hey, Nevada, 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 what's Monica. up? What's going on? Monica, how you? How you? How you? Everybody, I don't know. My wife know half of everybody. I'ma still say hi, even if I'm good with faces. She's good with names. I whatever. So anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah. So if you missed last week, please. I mean, go back. Go right it. back and watch it. It's really good. Um, if you missed last Tuesday, go right back and watch it. Um, Pat, uh, Bishop Gerard and, and, and Apostle Tori did an awesome job on last week. God bless them once again. So we want to start. Uh, we want to we want an epidemic to start. We want this whole movement of um, people to get on. If you if you got a story to tell, people need to hear it. People need to hear it, man. So get live. Join with uh, you know other couples. Y'all go ahead and join together. Make something happen. We are trying to spark, it's almost like holy jealousy, if you will. We are trying to spark some stuff. I want people to get jealous that we're on here. You can go back and watch it. I want people to go ahead and get jealous. I want people to get mad because I want people to start to move. Start to move. Don't get complacent. Don't get comfortable. If God has called you to do something, get up and make it happen. Uh, God bless my sister, Sister Amanda. Um, uh, holy hustler, you know, get it in. God bless her and, and my boy D. Well, but uh, we was just looking at just a small portion of her segment, and her segment she was talking about either you just going, what is it? Was it gonna, either fold or flex? Come on, come on, come on here, come on here. She did. I'm either trying you to. gonna fold or you gonna flex. Which one you gonna do? You see the muscle? Y'all can't see it. It's, it's way over here. But anyway, God bless y'all. We flexing. We want y'all to flex. Everybody, get your flex on. You got a story to tell, man. Definitely. People need to hear it. People feel like they by themselves. Um, and marriages, people feel like they body self. The couples feel like, ah, uh, ain't nobody gonna understand me. I love the people that sit up there and say, well, you just don't know my story. Of course I don't know your story because you ain't told nobody. 
So tell somebody, man. Tell somebody. As a matter of fact, get with godly people, man, who's going somewhere, who's doing something. Who's, you, you know they're going to pray for you. You know they're going to be there for you. It's going down in the fluid household, man. We're trying to spark some stuff. It is what it is. So, once again, we thank everybody for joining us. Timothy, God bless you. Monica already said hi. I ain't going to say hi eight times. <laughs> Amen. 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 God bless you, Monica. God bless you, sis. All right. So, without further ado, we're going to get it in. Once again, people going to be chiming in. People going to jump in. Whatever. Hit yeah. that share button. We want to we get it in. We want to get it in. We want God to be glorified in all marriages. All right? All right. So, on tonight. Tonight, we have segment in, in chapter four. On tonight, um, we are going to dive in. This is called the transition. All right? That's the topic of tonight, transition. All right? And when you, after you get to the point where the storm done hit your marriage, things have been chaotic, stuff is everywhere, you're trying to rebuild, you don't know where to start, you're looking around, the kids are over here, your husband and or wife is over here, um, everything is just in, in disarray, it's mm -hmm. in disorder, it's crazy. So you, you guys done messed up, you done made bad decisions, things have been crazy, you had a fallout, he done left. Um, for some of you, God bless your heart. Some of you, you, you might have had a, a baby with somebody else outside of the marriage. And this is real talk. Outside of the marriage. So now it's like, okay, you made the decision and be like, all right, we really want to go forth. We, we, I want to stay with you. I want to stay with you. I want to stay with you too. Hi, Lakeisha. Lakeisha, God bless you, sis. I want to stay with you too. So you guys have made the decision to stay in the marriage. And that is God ordained anyway, to stay in the marriage, to fight it out, to figure it out, to love it out. All right. So we, we, what do we do? Like, where do we go? We, we, we don't trust each other. What you're telling me, I don't believe it. You know, so what are we going to do, man? Where do we go from here? So what are we going to do now? The kids are involved. The kids know what's going on. They feel Family's the involved. Family's involved. You got one side of the family mad at him. You got the other side of the family mad at her. Um, don't nobody want to forgive anybody, whatever, whatever. So you're the transcender. So it actually starts with you. It actually starts with you. So if they're going to forgive, if they're going to, it's got to be demonstrated in and through you. All right. So now what? So now we begin the reset process. So the reset process. And there are some steps. Bam. No, we don't, like we said before, we don't know everything, but we've been through a lot. And what we do know, we want to pass on to you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the way God worked in us and it can work if you do the work. Yeah, I know everybody watch Ayana, Ayana fix my life, and she constantly says, "Do the work." Yeah. So now that you've decided to be together, now that you've decided to walk this thing out with each other, now you start the process. Yeah. And the first yeah. part of the process is a part of self reflection. And the reason why it's self reflection is because no matter how much either, either one of us wants to play the victim, yeah. each one of us had a part to play. And the marriage breakdown. Say that again, baby. They need to hear that. <laughs> each that one again. of us had a part to play. However small, however big, whatever. Each yeah. one of us had a part to play Amen. in the marriage breakdown. Amen. So the first thing you do is you go to God yep. and you ask him, God, show me me. Amen. Amen. And if you're not spiritually strong enough to hear God just yet, because you are just getting back together, then it's time to talk to some people that you are close to that 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 won't tell you to lie. You don't need any talk to any yes men at this point, right? right. Now, now you need real friends. You need real people that's going to tell you you dead wrong. Yes, I remember you did this. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember you did that. Mm -hmm. What was your? Did you have you you had a re, 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 reflection process? What was yours? Yeah, my reflection process was I would often sit down and I would sit on the couch and I would off I would just think back on all of the things that I did, and I would and I would just reflect on. Um, just the grace of God, man, and how God, how God snatched me out Hi, hope, new hope. of new hope. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. They're on Periscope. <laughs> God bless y'all. I love y'all. Y'all know I do. Um, but I will reflect back on just the grace of God and how God just snatched me out of the mess. Like it was almost like surreal for me. I couldn't believe that God would save a wicked hearted selfish um 
non-God setting type of mindset type of person like me. So you admit you were selfish. Absolutely. I, I've been saying selfishness all for every segment. <laughs> I've been. I mean, selfishness. That but, was but selfishness and pride. Play out? The selfishness, selfishness and pride. You mean like back when I was doing it, or selfishness and pride was just like the, in the first in the first seven years of our marriage. In the first seven years, selfishness and pride was like that. Was like that was my fuel. That's that's what drove me. So if anything didn't go right in the marriage, all right. Well, it doesn't feel right to me. It's not right. So and once hey, again, Vanessa. Vanessa, what's going on, sis? God bless you. Um, so if things didn't go right, and I was, once again, I said in the earlier segments, I said I was trying to shape Nikki into this whole image of what I thought that a quote unquote godly wife or a wife period is supposed to look. And anytime she didn't do that, okay, well, nah, you're, 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 defi you're, you're, you're anti towards me and you're anti towards God. You're not in the will of God. Oh, that was big. You're not in the will of God. You're not in the will of God because you're not doing what I said do. But it was it was more of a personal thing. You know, it was it was a proud, selfish thing. No, it was it had nothing to do with that. Then on top of that, I neglected my wife constantly over and over again. I would never pay attention to anything she said. Um, everything that she said, it was like, oh, you're just insecure. But it had nothing to do with insecurity. Husbands, I say this. Pay attention to your wives. We the, the world call it the third sense. They, they call it the third eye, whatever you want to call it. But it ain't none of that. It, it's called discernment. And they have a strong discernment when it comes down to some stuff. Pay attention to what they say. Because a lot of times, we walk blindsided. Yes, you do. We walk with tunnel vision. We don't see what's on the side of us or what's around us. They see... With a whole with a whole worldwide view of what's going on. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so pay attention to that. So I'm getting back to what I was saying. So and all and all in all, selfishness was just it was it was the drive. It was the fact that, you know, like I said, I would go to church, hide behind church, um, not want to deal with my responsibilities at home, not want to be the father that I was supposed to be to my, my sons, not be the husband I was supposed to be to my wife, my wife. And it, it was just it was crazy, man. It was crazy, just selfish. So that's my reflection. Well, mine was fear. Mine was fear. And that fear played itself out in me trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. I wanted to control everything you did. I wanted to control where you went. I wanted to control how the house finances went. I wanted to control what went on with the kids. I wanted to control everything because I was afraid that you couldn't do it. Mm. I was afraid that. You just you, you you couldn't take care of us. I was afraid you wasn't gonna do it right, and if I didn't do it, mm. then nobody else could do it. Especially you, even though you know I, I I wanted to be your wife, I just didn't think that you could take care of me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was like because I didn't I was I was afraid, and I didn't think you could take care of me. I did things to push you away from me. I didn't let you be the man in a relationship. I didn't let you be the head of the household because I wanted to be the head. Yeah. I was pushing my way into being the head. I didn't want you to be the head. Yeah. So it came to the point of God telling me, Nikki, you're out of order. Right. 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 You're you're just completely out of order. And right. because you're out of order, you played a role in your husband being distant from you. You put that wall there. You put it there brick by brick year after year. Mm -hmm. You did that. So you can't get mad at anybody if he's if he can't he's not close to you if he's not, you know, drawing near to you because you put a wall right there. Yeah. And I think that wall drove me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Tammy shooting shoes. <laughs> like shoot him, Tam. So it's it was it was it was just hard. It really was hard to to know. So then it was like, well, what else did you do? And I tell a lot of my friends, ones who I can't talk to, like I wasn't a good wife. I was I was a bit of a nag. Yeah. <laughs> I really was a bit of a nag because I just wanted things to go my way. Yeah. Because I was afraid. So I think that was my reflection moment. And once God dealt with my fear, then I could get in the order that He wanted us to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that was. Yeah. And I had to repent for those things too. Yeah. It's not just God show me me and then don't do nothing with it. It's yeah, I made a list. I'm a big writer. I, anybody that knows me, I always carry a notebook with me somewhere that I wrote all the things that I did wrong 
down and then I had to go to God and lay it at the altar and verbally because we love just putting on a piece of paper and throw it at the altar and not say what it was. No, yeah. you have to say what you did. Yeah. God, I'm sorry for, you know, walking into my marriage full of fear. Yeah. I'm sorry of all that doubt yeah. I put into my husband. I'm sorry for being disrespectful. I'm sorry for not being the wife that I should have been. I had to say all those things for God to break that, that what was in me. Yeah. So, so for those that are still jumping in, um, Patricia Lundy, I, I saw your, I saw your post. So I'm, I'm, we're, hopefully we'll, we, we will definitely address that with the next thing we're going to talk about. Um, but for those that are jumping in, um, we are talking about after the storm is hit, after adultery, after infidelity, after you found out that your husband is watching pornography or vice versa, uh, after... Because it does happen with it women It does too. happen with women too. Uh, after you found out that maybe your, your spouse is doing drugs or whatever the case may have you, whatever flaw that is, whatever negative thing that is, um, and you guys decide, and, and you figure it's just too much or whatever, but you guys sit down and decide that we're going to stay together. We're going to rock this thing out. Um, there, is there, there is a reset process. And this is what we're talking about on tonight. We're talking about the reset uh, process. So, st But there is steps to the reset process. This is not an overnight thing. No. Don't get it twisted. It's not an overnight thing. Sometimes you're going to have to go back and do it again. Yeah. Like you tried that day, oh, but today just ain't a good day. So pause. It's okay to pause. Press pause. And then go back and do go it. Go back and do it again. Yeah. And you're going to have to keep going back and doing it again. And doing it again. And doing it again. Definitely. It's, all right. So we go. So our second um, thing is you have to remember the good things about your spouse. If you got to sit down with a pen and a pad and write down every good thing about your spouse that drew you to that to, to your spouse in the first place, that's what you're going to have to do. Because now you're going back down memory lane to remember all of the good things that he did. Well, he, you know, he used to open the door for me. Um, well, no, 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 don't do mine. What's, what good things did you remember about me? Oh my goodness, I'm glad you asked that. We getting it in, marriage on blast. Um, no, 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 not all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we we getting it in. Um, so so all of the good things about my wife that drew me to her was the fact that my wife, no matter what's going on, my wife is the most loving, caring, uh, selfless person I've ever met in my entire life. Like to this day, I still be like, babe, why don't you just throw a rock at him? Like, stop playing. Like, cut him off. Or d my wife is the most caring person I've ever met in my entire life. Like, seriously. Um, the fact that she's caring, the fact that she's loving, she's a wonderful mother. She's a wonderful mother. Um, she's a wonderful friend. Um, she is, she, she, she's a woman of God. She's a woman of God. She loves God with all her heart. She goes hard. She goes hard. I mean, from the time she wakes up, and I ain't playing and I ain't lying, from the time she wakes up, she automatically presses her Bible. She's automatically reading her Bible. While she's moving around and doing whatever she's got to do. Then on top of that, she has her self-reflections for, okay, scriptures, whatever the scripture is for that day. She's reflecting on that. So she's I constantly keeping her spirit purged purged, and, 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 and motivated and, and amped up and ready to go. So when it comes down to just pouring out to other women and pouring out to other people, I mean, she, she's a selfless woman, man. I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> other than the fact that she's yes, hot. I am. Other than the fact she's fine? I mean, come on, man. Stop playing. I have a smoking hot wife. Like, for real. Really? Yes. Yeah. I thought about getting a bodyguard who's going to just stand around and follow her to, you know, work. But God said no. He said, you just be thank, the bodyguard. Thank All right. You. So, thank but anyway. Oh, well, and then for you, the good things I remember. Guys, when we first got married, we didn't have a car. And we live on we live on the west side. And... He would get on the bus to go get the boys on the east side on the bus and get off, you know, and walk, all, get off on what Genesee and Arnett and walk all the way down to where, uh, what, what Brooks just about with the boys. And I always thought like that was amazing. Like he didn't, he didn't, he didn't complain. 
he didn't fuss he he took care of the babies and as y'all know if y'all been watching our blast we are blended family yeah and he loved my baby like you can't a lot of people did not know we were a blended family until yeah. we started talking about it yeah so he he loved my baby like you can't you can't tell him he's not his so that was awesome to me i love i love the god in him because there are times when he has faith that i don't i will panic and freak out like i said before i had control <laughs> issues and he would be like, no, babe, God got it. We're okay. And I'm like, dude, we're, we, we're not okay. Like, help me. And see, see, New Hope didn't know. See, y'all, no one knew. No one knows that we're a blended family yep. because... That's how it's supposed that's to how look. That's how it's supposed to look. Because we're a family unit. It's Sorry. awesome. Um, I also, I'm trying to think of what else. It was so much. that Oh, he is... I am the more serious one in the relationship. He is so goofy and so spontaneous it drives me crazy but i love that part of him because if i had to do stuff it would be everything has to be planned out to the day and to the second and to the minute and then the the, the, the activities will be planned out but him no he'll walk in the house and be like hey we're going to pennsylvania and i'm like when he's like right now i'm like do i, do I got time to pack yeah you got about an hour we're a family of six so that's a lot, but mm -hmm. I love that spontaneous side of him because it 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 brings out life in me. It gives me life to live through his goofy self. So those were things that God brought back to our God remembrance. Bless you guys. Thank you, thank you. That we will remember. That's the good stuff. Like he's my friend. Like I've known you since I was fourteen. Thirteen going on fourteen. Thirteen going on. 14. 13 going on 14. I was I was 15. And we're 37 and 38 now. Yeah. I'm proud of my years. Yeah. So so we've been rocking this thing yeah. off for the longest. But we're we're saying what we're saying not to bore you to death. We're saying what we're saying <laughs> on purpose. Um, that was just a self reflection that was the of. Step. Yeah, that was the second step. That was a self reflection of. This is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to go back to the drawing board, sit down, and say, and okay, remember. what drew me to him in the first place. What drew me? What to drew me to her in the first place? Mm -hmm. What 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 drew me to the altar? Why why did I why did I allow him to put that ring on my finger? Why did I allow him, why did I say I do? Mm -hmm. What drew me to them? Think about all the good things. Remember when you first had your child? I mean, how did you feel when you first had your child by this person? Or or better yet, for some of you, you might have brought a child into the marriage. And how did you feel to watch that person love on Seriously? your baby? Seriously? Like And he loved on your child? And she loved on your child. That's come on. That's awesome. Come on. So you got to reflect on that. So the third process. This is the one. The third that gets everybody that make that's a bit of a stumbling block for people. The third step in this process, babe. You can go ahead. No, the, the third step is really hard, and I'm gonna tell you it's hard because if you didn't do step one and step two, don't jump to step three. Yeah. Do yeah. step one and do yeah. step two. And then step three, step three is the time to talk. It's the time to sit face to face and talk. Amen. And when we say talk, we mean it's time to tell what you did. Amen. It's time to confess. Yeah. This is that portion where it says confess your sins one to another. Yeah. This is that point. Yeah. This is that point. And the reason why we say confess it, you confess it because Rochester is that big, y'all. And for us, where we live at, rumors were everywhere. They That's were right. flying all over That's the right. place. Everybody was talking about it. You know, people were saying, I said this. And people were saying, he said that. And they did this. So everybody was talking. But at this, this step, it was, no, the only person talking right now is you. Mm -hmm. I want to hear mm -hmm. what you did mm -hmm. from your mouth. Mm -hmm. He wanted to hear what I did from my mouth. Mm -hmm. So this is where that conversation started of how far did it go? How many times? Where were you? What did you do? What was your mindset? What was going on when that happened? That's not an easy conversation because for the ladies, you're going to have to hear him being with another woman. Yeah. Yeah. For the fellas, you're going to have to hear her being with another man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Those are the things that you're going to have to hear. And they're not easy things to hear. They're not easy things to process because the first thing you want to do, you might want to slap him. Yeah. Amen. He might want to shake you. The saints. The saints. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, but it's the truth. Yeah. That's how you feel. Yeah, right. it, it, it's, it's time. And I, I say for everyone, by the time you do step one and step two, when you get to step three, ask God for grace. Yeah. Ask God for grace yeah. for your marriage, for grace it. for your spouse, yeah. and 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 just and for for forgiveness. Remember what forgiveness is, and ask God for grace. And don't please do not ask a question that you're not willing to handle the answer. You know you know what I mean. So don't ask a question if you're not willing to handle the answer. Which means you don't have to do all of this in one night. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do all of this in one in night. Steps. Small steps. In steps. Because right. it didn't, you didn't you didn't just boom cheat. You didn't just boom start drugs. You didn't just boom lose whatever in a lotto. You didn't do all of that at one time. Yeah. You did small steps right. to get into that trouble. So now right. you're gonna take small steps to get out of that trouble. Yeah. You're absolutely right. The reset process. The reset process, that's right. All right. So once again, we're talking about the different steps that you have to take for this reset to, to even take place, for it to take full effect in your marriage. Uh, for singles who might, you know, you might have been in a relationship with somebody, you, you felt like this was the one, like, this is the one for, you know, we, 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 we gonna ride this thing out. But it starts there, in all honesty, it starts there. If, if, if these are the things that you know for a fact that you've been facing, uh, prior to getting married, um, by all means, seriously, it's something that you need to definitely address um, and, and exercise on a day to day basis. Definitely. All right, communicate on a day to day basis. Exactly. If it's if, if you cheated on her and she cheated on you or whatever that whatever the case may be, um, it's time to put those things on the table, talk about them, face them, and and start to move on and start to press the reset button so you can start these processes. So all right, so the, so number four, all right. Number four is accountability partners. Yes. All right? Change your circles. Yes, you can Change them. If your circle was running with you when you did all this dirt, change Sister your Sister Tramel, God bless you, mom. God it's bless time, you. It's, it's time to change your circle. If, if the friends you have can't be, as we say all the time, if they can't be team fluid yeah. and they're only team Nikki or yeah. team Sam... When you're doing dirt, yeah. change your circle. That's right. Your marriage is worth it. That's right. Ch change everything. Change who? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's right, Dad. It's time that's to right. let them go. That's right. You gotta let them go because they're gonna put more poison back into your marriage. They're yeah. gonna keep rem reminding you, "Hey, we used to go out. We used to do this. We used to do that." But now you can't do that because you're back with them. I had people tell me that. Oh, it used to be fun, but now you married again. Well, I was married the whole time. We was just in sin. Yeah. You enjoyed me being in sin. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But now I'm doing right and you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. But that's what happens when you're in sin. You see a different side of people. People see a different side of you. Mm -hmm. And it's time for you to change that. It's a restoration process. It's a renewing. Yeah. So it's the accountability partners. Um, married couples. Our biggest thing is we didn't have any married people to hang with. Yeah. We were the babies. Oh, yeah. We didn't have big. anybody. That we didn't have big. any married people to hang with. That was so big. we didn't have anyone to hang with when we first got married. We didn't have anybody to hang with when the marriage fell apart. Mm -hmm. So putting it back together, God gave us a lot of people. Exactly, New Hope. We need community. Yeah. He gave us, we, yeah. we joined a different church. We left that church. We joined a different church. And they gave us, they used to have, uh, what, connect groups. Yeah. yeah. Our connect group was yeah. full of married couples. That's right. And we love those people. Oh, That's right. my goodness. I hope some of them are watching. I wish I could name them all, but I'm not going to do that. But we absolutely love them. That's and right. they walk with us mm -hmm. through our whole process. And I don't mm -hmm. even know if they all know they did. I know a couple of couples knew they did. But... They walked with us and they gave us something to do. We, we met every Friday night with this, these married couples. That's right. Our kids, our friends, we're all close. We've done weddings together, birthday parties, graduations. Barbecues. Barbecues, just chilling and hanging out. We've done yeah. that because we needed to be around other couples at different stages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You need to surround yourself with married people. If your church does not have a marriage ministry, find one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does not matter. We are all one body, mm -hmm. one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Mm -hmm. Find a church that has a marriage ministry and get in it so you can get around other married couples. So Amen. you can surround yourself with like-minded people. It's a wonderful thing to be around like-minded people. Hanging with a bunch of single people is not good for married people at all. And it is it is my prayer. And I'm, I'm so serious. Like, it is my desire. Like, it's almost like this this dream that you, you like, you're so passionate. You got to see it fulfilled. It is my desire to walk in churches and see nothing but families together. Not not the wife there and the husband's at home. Not the husband there and the wife at home. And he done left the kids at home. And all no, my prayer is to see married couples together mm -hmm. in churches, worshiping God under one roof. Together. That is my desire. Oneness. Oneness. To to to, to reflect what what reset looks like. To reflect what God looks like, how God loves his church. That is my desire. Mm -hmm. So change your circle. Change your circle. If, if, if you've been rocking with your homeboy, your homeboy always be like, yo, man, you don't need that, man. Let's go out. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, uh, uh. No, no. Listen, you got to stand over there, man. I'm doing a whole new thing over here. Amen. Change your circle. It is worth it. And what hangs in the balance is your marriage. Definitely. So if that person was the negative in your marriage, you got to cut that off, man. Definitely. You got to cut it off. I can't tell you how many people that I, that I had around me is no longer around me. That's true. And it wasn't because of the fact, oh, I don't want you around me. No, they were my friends. They were my boys. They were my. No, I got to cut you off, man. I'm doing a whole nother thing right now. And when God is elevating you, when God is doing a, a work in necessary. you, and it's when God is changing you, I can't describe it. when God is changing you, man. Trust me, your whole your, your whole perspective change. Especially Everything after changes. Something like this. After something like this, trust me, you see things clearer after that. Yeah. And so now your passions and your desires and your wants is for your family mm -hmm. and, and, and and to see other families come together and to see other married couples come together. Definitely. And so now your drive and your and your ambitions is now for other people. It's to see them reunited. Definitely. Isn't it amazing? That's how God works, man. God is amazing. All right. But anyway, I'm getting hyped. Getting hyped. <laughs> so, Marriage on Black. Real quick review. We keep doing, gonna keep doing this review because we want you guys to get the process. So it's Amen, the first step Tim. is self-reflection. Reflect on what you did. Don't, don't, don't think about what he did. Don't think about what she did. Think about what you did. Because no matter what, how big or how small, you played a part in the breakdown of your marriage. That's right. Number two, remember the good things. Because that's why you said you was going to be together anyway. That's why you decided to stay together. That's right. Remember the good things about your spouse. There are good things because if it wasn't good things, you wouldn't have gotten you married. wouldn't have been married. So there are good things. There are good things. The third step is the hard step. It's the longest step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. Now it's time to talk. A face-to-face -face conversation. Confess your sins to each other. Don't let anyone else tell you what they did. That's right. You tell me. That's right. I'll tell you what I did. That's You'll right. tell me because we're going to lay it all out. That way, No, we don't give the enemy no room. Mm -hmm. The enemy can't bring anything else to us because he's going to tell them, oh, well, she already told me that. I know about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, oh, no, he already told me about that. I know about that. We're good. We we held, we handled that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. There are no new no, no, there's no news. We already told it already. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell on me. I told on myself. I'm good. And then um, accountability partners. Get you some godly friends. Amen. You're right. No new news, new hope. Exactly. That's right. Like, get you some accountability partners. Get you some people to walk with you through this thing. Some other married couples. Find you a marriage ministry. Amen. I don't care if you got to Google it. Find it. Amen. Get in with some other couples. Walk this thing out. That's right. That's and right. now, um, we're at a step that a lot of us... And when I say us, I mean all of us brown people don't like to do, which can be very, very necessary 
It's go seek godly counsel. That's right. Counselor. That's right. Psychiatrist. A shrink. Go see somebody else because there may come a time in this process where things get really hot between you two and you're not really hearing from God. Mm -hmm. Because if you're both being redeemed at the time, you, we, you might not be spiritually strong enough mm -hmm. to listen to everything your spouse is saying to you. So therefore, it's time to meet a third party in the middle. Yes, if you light skin too, Pastor Tammy. <laughs> okay, all you brown and light skin. It don't matter what skin. Color. It don't matter what skin reflection but, you are. Yeah, especially us and church folks. That's too. Yeah. Don't yeah. like to go to counseling. Don't believe in going to see a psychiatrist. I don't secular psychiatrists. I have a bit of an option with. I uh, ought with because sometimes they want you to reflect on the negatives too much. But a godly counselor will cause you to reflect on the on the negative, mm -hmm. to repent from that negative, mm -hmm. and point you back to God, mm -hmm. which will point you back to your spouse. Amen. Amen. Well, okay, I'm writing down these questions, so we're gonna go back to them. Okay. Um. So seek godly counsel. Go ahead. So definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, seek godly counsel. I mean, it is vital. Once again, what hangs in the balance? Your marriage does. I mean, you, you, if you think about it, we done invested so many years. I done invested so many months. Um, you know, a lot of us, well, is that time wasted? No, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can, you can, you can start all over again, and, and these can be the best years of your life, the best days of your life, if you so choose. Everything is based off of a choice. God gave man the freedom of choice. So everything that we do, everything that we say, how we think, everything is reflected off of our choice. So choose to do the right thing. Choose to still be obedient and, and, and be in the will of God. Choose to love. Love is a choice. Choose to love. Choose to start over again. Choose to do the right thing. Choose to forgive. And that's where we're going now. Wait. For, yeah, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Oh. I definitely, I want to slow this pace down on this one right here. Forgiveness. Because it's the hardest thing for people to not choose to do. No one wants to forgive. Not especially when they feel like they've been abused and they've been hurt. You want to be angry. You want to be mad. And truth be told, you have a right to. Because someone broke your heart, they broke that covenant, they did that. So you want to be mad. Okay, fine. Be angry, sin not. You can do that. That's fine. But since you've chosen to stay together, you cannot stay with someone and you haven't forgiven them. You're going to make your life miserable. You're going to make your household full of tension. You're going to make your children miserable. Amen. You're going to make each other miserable. Amen. And if I wanted to have a miserable life... Why would I stay married? Why, why would Amen. I stay married and be miserable? Amen. If that's the case, if you just stay married, what? Why, why, why would they stay married and be miserable? Just to have sex, you think? Um, you know what it is? It's just, it, it's, it's, a, it's toxic. It's toxic and that unhealthiness becomes part of the norm. So that unhealthiness becomes part of the norm. So now you feel like this is normal for us to sit up here, make up and break up, make up and break up hurt each other, verbally dis disrespect each other. So that becomes part of the norm. So you think that's okay. And that it's not okay. Even though your body's telling you this is not okay. I don't feel right. I, I'm stressing out. You know, you're, you're, you're physically having issues. You know, you're mentally having issues. You're emotionally broken. So all of these things, your body's telling you like, yo, this ain't right. And it's forgiveness. Forgiveness is the root of all of it. You gaining weight, your hair falling out. You, you 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 can't sleep at night. Yeah. Why? Because there's unforgiveness in your heart. That's right. And the person you're not forgiving is laying right next to you in the bed. That's right. That's right. You you're telling, oh no, we're fine. You're not really fine. You you're not really fine. Yeah. Especially if something took place that was detrimental, like uh, like infidelity, like um you know you caught him or her you know you know watching pornography or. Can I take it a, st a step deeper? I'm sorry. Yep. Marriage on blast. 
if your if your if your spouse if you found out that your spouse liked the same sex can i talk about it if you found out that your, your spouse liked the same sex was exactly. into exactly. the same they sex don't even care <laughs> all right and they okay so now you guys have came to this mutual line where it's like okay i'm done with that god has delivered me from that i want to start over again how do you start over again when you know for a fact that you can't compete with a man or a Another man or, or, or a woman can't... I can't compete with that. How do you start over again? But my thing is, God is a God who can restore anything. Anything. The Bible says he can do the impossible. Definitely. So God can restore. So we're on this forgiveness thing, okay? So I, I dare not continue this on without giving you scripture to back it up. I dare not do it. So, in St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, if you read that scripture, the disciples had the same issues as what we have today. Forgiveness, like not forgiving somebody. All the way up to the point where one of them asked, hey, Jesus, uh, how many times do we forgive a person? Seven? Eh. And Jesus quickly responds and he, he quickly replies and he says, um, I say not. He says seven times, but until 70 times seven. That's a lot of forgiveness. That's a lot of forgiveness. But so so why did you even bring up that scripture? Why do you even say that? First of all, we're talking about forgiveness and you have to forgive. Have to. Because that's your freedom. Your freedom is tied to your forgiveness. Oh my God. Tweet that. That's good. I'm, I'm speaking. The Holy Spirit speaking. Um, you felt that? I felt that. That's okay. good. That's good. Okay. All right. So. What Jesus meant in this expression was, it's not about the number of times you forgive a person. Stop looking at the number of times you have to forgive them. I'm trying to do something in and through you. And not only that, I'm trying to reflect something out of you. Tam throwing shoes. <laughs> Throw them shoes, says Tam. I'm trying to get something out of you. But not only that, I'm trying to demonstrate, I'm trying to manifest myself in and through you, through this situation, through forgiveness. Because when you when you start showing forgiveness and forgiving a person, God is glorified and he's lifted up. And that person takes notice. And that person takes notice and that person has no other choice but to be drawn to it. Definitely. I'm speaking to somebody, man. And this is a true demonstration of what God does for us. The Bible says, while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. And while we continue in our sins, because many of us, we, we continue in sin. And how God loves us and God forgives us. And the fact that God forgave us, mm -hmm. God wants you to demonstrate Definitely. that same forgiveness to your, to your fellow man, to your husband, to your, to your wife. Especially if you call yourself a Christian. Especially if you call yourself found in Christ. How can you be found in Christ if Christ ain't revealed? That was good. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. I like that one. That was good. You're hiding Christ. No, 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 no. If you're going if you're gonna walk this walk called Christianity, called faith, it has to be manifested. It has to be, it has to be open. The Bible says our lives are open book, read of all men. So that means people are your husbands and, and your wives are watching. They're watching your move. Yeah. They're watching. What are you going to do? Okay, we had an argument. So who's going to forgive? Especially us men. Because we're too proud. Yes, y'all are. But you can, do you know you can win a person over? No matter how proud he is? I'm a living witness to that. God can move in any situation if you allow him to. Definitely. Definitely. So forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgive again. Forgive again. Every day. Make it. Every listen. Day. Make Every him second. a plate. Husbands, make her a plate. Run the bath water. Run the bath water. Bring the check home. You might have argued. Y'all might have had a fallout. Still do Skip it in Jesus' name. Forgive. Love. Amen. Forgive. Love until it becomes part of the, your norm. Now it's the norm for me. Uh, loving him. I'm loving him. I know you hurt me, but that's okay. I love you still. That, ain't that what Christ did for us? Definitely. Yes, he did. I love you in spite of. But how did that play out with us? 
for us loving each other in spite forgiveness. of forgiveness. Oh, did you sense the forgiveness? Did, how how did you know that I forgave you? I knew, babe. I knew you forgave me. First of all, you let me back in the house. That's first of all. <laughs> let's get that. Let's get. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna walk past that. I'm gonna moonwalk <laughs> backwards, and I'm gonna listen. My wife let me back in the house because I didn't have my keys on me. She had the keys. All right. So that's first of all, she let me back in the house. So second of all, it's the fact that my wife still cooked for me. My wife still made me feel like I was a king. Even though I felt like a peasant. I wasn't sitting on the throne, no nothing. But my wife still made me feel like, yo, you still the man. I still love you. And it confused me. It made me think like, okay, she's trying to kill me. My wife trying to kill me. This is this is it, Lord. This is it. But no, my wife loved on me, man. And I couldn't help but respond to that. I couldn't help. It drew me. And I said, it showed me Jesus Christ. I said, yo. Now, mind you, man, I've been in church all my life, just about. And do you know she demonstrated more of Christ than I did? I'm speaking to somebody, man. Husbands and wives love each other, forgive each other every day, every hour, every minute, forgive. Definitely. I know it hurts. I know it's constant. Constant reminder, but you still forgive. Pray, pray for him. Pray for her and forgive. How do you forgive? Not only by words, but you forgive by actions. That's what it was with us. After we confessed everything, forgiveness was an action. Yeah. Everything was action. Yeah. Even, now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. It was a, it was different. It was a different That's experience. Right, LaShawn. Yes, for it is. Me, the woman coming to the man and telling him, yes, I've been unfaithful too. That was a different experience. Because men get a different type of anger and rage in them. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a little scared at first. But... I got tired of hiding, of hiding it. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to tell him since he told me. Sarah, I'm going to have to tell you, him. Sis. God bless you. And I expected him to blow up. I really did. I, but he didn't do any of that. He literally said, how can I be mad at you? I was the cause of it. I was the reason. I was the reason. So why would I be mad at something that I caused? And I caused this to come into my home. I was passive and I was selfish. I allowed this to come into my home. So this was just the effects of me me being an ungodly man, me not me being carnal minded and selfish and not understanding the full dynamics of what marriage was about. When you don't have a full understanding of what marriage is about, you liable to allow you you you're liable to allow anything in your home. Anything will come into your home. So it's it. This is detrimental. So when when we were talking about marriage on blast, we have an exciting time about it. But this is serious because this is this is potent information that is going to help your marriage. That's going to okay. Well, grab these nuggets. Definitely. When Bishop Gerard Nim is teaching on Tuesday, grab those nuggets. Anybody that you see, anybody that's you about see, marriage. Sit, watch the lives, whoever it is, watch the lives, because you're going to be able to pull something from that. Yeah. And when we're yeah. talking about forgiveness, there's another tricky part to the forgiveness. I couldn't just forgive him. I had to forgive everybody involved. That's right. That's right. I had Amen. to forgive everybody involved. Y'all, that was not easy. Amen. I wanted to throw a brick at him and throw another brick at them. Like it was hard, but I had to forgive them all because like he said, the forgiveness wasn't me forgetting. That's what people, most, most people think that once you forgive somebody, that means you forgot what they did. No, I didn't forget. Yeah. I remember to this day, Yeah. but what I'm choosing is I'm choosing to love. Like he was saying before, I'm choosing to love you past this. Amen. And with that other person, no. I'm not telling that you got to go chill with your your wife's side piece or her creep or you got to go chill with your husband's mistress. No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is you have to forgive them also. That's right. 
So, my mother got at me about that. She was like, no, that person needs to be saved too. That's another that's soul right. that needs to be saved. That's right. This is what we're saying around getting around godly people who will push your mind back into that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, and then here, that's the second part. I'm happy you brought that up, Evangelist Haygood, hey, of forgiving yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the forgiving good. yourself, that's good, Evangelist, jumps back into that first step of that self reflection. Yeah. You can't forgive yourself till you can confess everything that you did to God first. That's right. Because the first person you sinned against was God, because God put your marriage together. That's right. That was a covenant that He did. That's right. That's right. So now you have to go back to the first step. Self-reflection. Get a pen and a piece of paper. Write down what you did. Write down about the nasty ways you talked to your husband. Mm -hmm. Write down about the times you withheld yourself from him just because you didn't feel like being bothered. That's Come a sin, here. ladies. Come you on. don't like it, but it is. Come on here. God said, don't do it unless you fast and for a short time and then hurry up and come back together. Oh my God. So, oh, wait a minute. That's going to be one to talk about in a minute, Patricia. I'm sorry, Periscope. There's stuff going on on Facebook. So, Patricia, we see you. We see we, we we're actually writing this down. We're writing it down. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna address everything. So we're it's, gonna address it's, everything. It's forgiving yourself. Thank you for sharing. That that. Once you, Thank you. Once you confess what you did to God, you repent for it, and Amen. know that God is forgiving you. Amen. There's no point in carrying around self-loathing. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help better your marriage. Amen. Is that you are a new creature in Christ? Then you are a new creature in Christ. You've come to Him. You've confessed it. It's done. So if that forgiveness starts with forgiving yourself first. That was the first one before you can do anything for anybody else. Yeah. You got to confess it to, you know, you got to forgive yourself first. Yeah. So then it's forgiving everybody involved. Everybody involved. Forgive everybody. Yeah. Once you do that, and that may take a while. Like, y'all, this is not a run. You can't run through this process. This is a walk, a very slow walk, and it's not a cover-up either. Right. Don't hide stuff because you think, oh, if I told that, then they really going to be hurt. But that's what, got you, hurt. that's what got you in trouble in the first place when you Hide hiding stuff. things. No, you got to expose that stuff. You got to expose those issues. You got to expose the sin. You got to expose the, 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 the stench. You got to expose everything. Definitely. And when you can expose everything, now you now you can address everything. Definitely. Now you know what to take care of. But if you keep hiding and stuff like that, it is not going to help. That's what got you in trouble in the first place. Definitely. You leave the door open for the enemy to just do whatever he wants to do. And if you want God to get the glory, expose everything. All right? So the next step in this process is... You need to hold on to God and each other. Hold on to God and you need to hold on to each other. In doing all of this, this helps your children heal. Because we had kids in our process. And if they're old enough, if infidelity took place, if pornography took place, Whatever drugs, the situation, drugs, whatever money. the situation, and you guys are in the process of healing and things are becoming better and you clash, but it's still getting better. It is your job and your duty. If you have children that was involved to go and apologize to your children, apologize to your babies. Because Apolog you don't think that kids notice stuff. You don't think you don't think your sin affects other people. It does. Yes. And you don't think it affected your children. It did. Go and apologize. I had to literally apologize to every every single one of my sons. And let me tell you how it played out in our sons' lives during this process. My oldest child is the calmest kid in the world. If anybody knows him, they know he is calm. He got angry in this process. He was real aggy about everything. Amen. My second son, he got even angrier. He was just downright violent just yeah. spazzing on people at school just flipping out at home just all types of stuff our third baby he was the only one that kind of held out hope 
he was the only one that when everybody else was freaking out, he'd be like, no, dad's going to come home. Mm -hmm. Dad's going to make it better. Dad's going to come home. He would come in my room and check in the morning That's right, sir. to see if his father was home. Like, it was, it was a lot. It was a whole lot for them to deal with. And then our last son used to walk through the house at night looking for his dad, and he wasn't there because we weren't living in the same household. But Sean, thank you for sharing that. I'm so now too. he came home and when he came home, he sat each one of them down. That's another reason I, I love him. He sat them down and he apologized to them. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot to do. We had to apologize. And then I had to go and apologize to them. Like, I'm so mommy. Sorry. We're sorry that we put you through that. We're sorry that you had to see that. Amen. We're so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to see that. I'm so sorry you heard us say all those ugly things to each other. Because those were some things that were said that we're never going to repeat again. But they was out there. Mm. There were some things that was done that never should have been done. But it was. Amen. So we had to go and apologize to our babies. Don't be too prideful to go to your children too and repent. That shows them. That shows them how to walk in their... That's, that, that's a spiritual lesson for them also. That's right. That you're never too big to say I'm sorry. That's right. That's, that's right. the problem now. People get married and no, everyone has so much pride. No one knows how to say I'm sorry. Nobody has to say I did this. Most people say, well, if I offended you. No, 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 no. I offended you. I hurt you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Take ownership. Ownership. Take Definitely ownership. take ownership. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good, man. So, so that's, so like I said, that's another step. Um, definitely apologize to your children. Definitely. Um, especially if they're old enough to even understand it. Definitely apologize. Even my, my son was younger. He was, he was much younger. And I still apologize Hi, to him. Pastor Tori. God bless you, Pastor Tori. Um, I still apologize to my younger son um, because my younger son would come in the room and ask, where, where am I? You know, or looking for me. And he wasn't old enough to understand that I was, you know, oh, gone, gone. But still, I, I apologize to him. Um, you can never be, you know, too old or too, or too grown or too proud to sit up there and apologize to your children, especially when you were the reason why things, you know, went wrong. So definitely do so, man. Um, and you got You guys got to understand that y'all need each other. Definitely. Y'all need each other, husbands. We, we yo, we we need our wives. We need our wives. Um, wives, you need your husband. You do. Y'all need each other to make this thing work. Cause you got to weather a storm. Yeah. Because if it's something public, like an adultery, or being on the news for something. Yeah. Or. Uh, Anything, if there's anything that a lot of people know, whether it's family or outside people, you're going to need each other in Amen. this process of healing because some people on the outside is not going to get why you stayed together. That's right. Some people are not going to get it. And some people might actually fight you about it and tell you, oh, you're stupid for going back to him. Mm -hmm. Or you're a fool that you think she going to do right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People will say that. People close to you will say that. And if you don't hold on to a God... To the, the promise that God made to restore your marriage and then the promise that you made to each other mm. to be faithful and true, to be a, to have a reset season, a mm -hmm. reset process, mm -hmm. then you're going to fall apart again. Mm -hmm. So it's not just it's holding on to God and definitely holding on to each other more because right at that point, it really will be y'all against the world. That's right. It really will be. That's right. It'll be the, you'll be against the, what the That's world's right. image of what your marriage is. Amen. Amen. After everything has fell apart, Amen. the gossip is going to be horrendous. Yeah, if it's something public, even if it ain't, somehow somebody always finding out. So but, that's going to be hard. But y'all need each other to get through it. You need each other. Y'all need each other to get through it. All right. You have, um, you have somebody. Just re just remember, when you're in a marriage, you have one person living, walking this journey, the individual journey. You have another person walking this individual journey and they're coming together under one roof. So now you have two different journeys colliding together. So you're, you're going to continue to walk these journeys, but you're going to help each other walk these journeys. Definitely. And that's how it's supposed to go. And you're not going to see eye to eye. 
You know, things are not going to go the same way, but that's why you figure it out. You find it out and you figure it out what works for this marriage. Definitely. It's going to it's going to require comp, you know, compromising it. It's going to require eating some things and it's going to it's going to require, you know, shutting up sometimes. And it's going to require, okay, well here's I'll, I'll speak then, but it will forgiveness is the key. At this point. You're going to constantly forgive over constantly. and over. Every day. We say it again. When I say every day, it's waking up in the morning with that person laying next to you and you're like, I choose to forgive them. It's you fixing that person That's right, breakfast. Sister Tam. I choose to yes, forgive them. It's it's going to work. It's it's walking in the house and seeing their cell phone on the couch and not picking it up because you're like, no, I choose to forgive them. I know for me, definitely, because of how we got back together, he laid everything out for me. So if I yeah. wanted to look, I already had the passwords. I already had everything. Amen. I had it. So if I wanted to look, I could. There you. That's right. You have to walk in that forgiveness, which means I choose. I'm yeah. not finna follow you everywhere. I'm not finna follow you all over Rochester trying to see what you're doing. Yeah. I'm not finna do that yeah. because I choose to forgive you. I choose to trust you again. I choose to do that. And it was a minute by minute because you know, women, how our minds work. Your mind will play with you and it will play with your heart. And let him be gone for half a second too long. And you think that he is somewhere with somebody else. And it's like, no, no, no. I choose to forgive him. And when you do that, you're putting it in trust, God's lap. Sean, building trust. Yeah. You're putting that in God's lap. Because it's building like, God, trust all over again. I put our marriage to you. I gave We gave our marriage to God. Mm -hmm. So I can't be Holy Ghost Junior to you. Yeah. I can't lead and guide you yeah. into all righteousness. That's yeah. not my job. Women, stop that. Please stop doing that. You can't you are I love Joyce Meyer. She said it first. You are not Holy Ghost Junior. Mm -hmm. You can't play that role. Mm -hmm. You will drive yourself crazy trying to make that man holy. It does not work like that. Amen. Let God do it. Amen. Let God make you holy. Amen. And let God make him holy. And y'all can walk y'all holy walk together. But you can't focus that whole time. You have to choose to forgive and keep going. And now we get to the fun step. I think it's the fun step. Well, we call it the fun step. The fun step is date all over again. That's the fun. Date all over again. Start all over again. Go get a get an ice cream cone together all From over Lugia. again. From Lugia. And I know this may sound cutesy pool, and I know some of the, some of the dudes are like what. Yeah, start all over again. All over. Buy a rose all over again. Buy a card all over again. Go for walks all over again. Do it all over again. Reason why I say go for walks and these little small little tidbit things is because people don't normally do them anymore. Yeah, once you get we're married. Too, we're too busy. We got so much going on. And that's nothing but the trick of the enemy anyway. To make us so busy to the point where we forget about one another. We forget about just the little small things that drew us to each other in the first place. Absolutely, Sister Stephanie. It's not there we go, job, Sister Steph. But to love him. All right. Definitely. So so definitely do that, man. Start dating all over again. Um, start doing a little small thing. Sit down. Like if she's in there cooking, go put men, pull the chair up in the kitchen and sit down and start talking about don't talk about the kids, don't talk about the bills. Talk about each other. Talk about, well, babe, um, what are you thinking about? You know, what's your goals? What's your dream? Dream together again. Dream together again. Because that's what happens when your marriage starts to break down. When you stop dreaming together, that's a red flag. That's right. Look for that red flag. That's a really hard red flag. Right. If you're not dreaming together and you're not talking about the future together anymore, that's a huge red flag. Call a, what, time out on the play. That's right. And, and go back Amen. and look that over again because something is wrong. There's Amen. an issue. And Amen. that's one thing. We would lay in the bed giggling. I ain't had a date night in forever at that point. Hadn't had one. We didn't really have time for one. Yep. Because we were still, we were rebuilding while living in the house. So mm -hmm. we were building us together mm -hmm. while still taking care of our children. While still going to work. We had found a new church. But some nights we would just lay in the bed and he's Dream. a singer. So he would sing little tunes, and I would try to guess the tune. Yeah, man. Or, or don't you dare. Y'all ain't know your boy did that, huh? 
don't, don't. Yeah. Don't. All right, I'm sorry. Behave. So <laughs> we would we would talk. We would we would. I don't know. Just anything. If I'm doing my anything. hair, he sits there and does my hair. He washes my hair, y'all. Oh, it's amazing. He washes. Oh. Yes. This is how you know, men <laughs> and husbands. This is how you know you have reached the plateau in your marriage when you start washing your wife's hair. So it's she can amazing. do her head. This oh, is how you know you've gotten it. Gerard, you gotta wash your hair. It's come on, amazing. come on, Bishop. Come it's on amazing. now. Amazing. Come on here. The best hair uh, washer ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know y'all been together too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can you can sing if you want to. You can sing, Bishop. Um, but yeah, you just start loving again, man. Start loving on each other again. Start spending time. I know you got the kids. I know things are chaotic. I know things is crazy. Hustle and bustle. Oh, and doing her feet. All right, and that's what I'm talking All about. Right. That's, that's what I'm talking. Now we saying some things. Um, or his late night massages. You know, men carry a lot of weight on them shoulders, ladies. Give him a nice massage. You know, do his feet. Get the foot bath. Put on a mask on your nose and do his feet. I'm a, yo. Listen, listen. <laughs> I know y'all be listen. Don't you say how it? long has it been? Oh Jesus! How long has it been since y'all really just had like an actual romantic? Okay, I'm let's let's do this. Let's do this how we used to do it when we when we first got together, when we first got married, and we was in the honeymoon stage. Okay, you and, clean that up. Yeah, I'm trying to make it nice. All right, um, <laughs> holy holy covenant. Um, and renewing covenant. Yeah, there we go. Renewing your covenant. But how, how long has it been? I mean, since you know. Go get, go get some cheap roses. Go get them, like, and 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 pull the the petals off and make it have you can, candles. Listen, listen here. You can you can you can have you can have your 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 marriage all over again. Your honeymoon, you can have that all over again. Y'all can learn each other all over again. <laughs> Tell you, man, it, it, it can go down. Definitely. So these are all the steps we we just. But wait, we gotta. I gotta time out for the dating. For the date nights, for the dating again, this is what kind of stumbles people up to. Recognize what season that you're in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For us, we were still in a season yeah. of having young children when we were in the process of putting, all right, some D'Angelo in the back. That's Come on it. here. That's it. Come on here. Get some of that brown sugar. All of that. There it is. All of that. But... Recognize the what, saints. <laughs> recognize what season you're in. You may not be in a season that y'all can just go out and do all these extravagant things. You, you're not in that season. Mm -hmm. But when you put the kids to bed, then have some time together. When the kids are at school, then have some time together. You know, one Sunday, I hope the no pastors try to get at me. One Sunday, don't go to church. Just relax at Bedside Baptist with a cup of coffee and some good conversation. Y'all enjoy each other. Enjoy each other. Y'all may end up talking about Bible to each other. I mean, that might be the best message that you didn't heard from anybody in a long time. Some of the best messages I've heard preached was at Bedside Baptist. And we're sitting. So if you're a Christian, listen. Yes, you can listen to. Okay, let's talk about that. Oh, that's Real good. Quick, Come on here. Let wait, the questions wait, flow. Wait, Bishop said, now wait. <laughs> <laughs> you not miss every Sunday, but you can miss one at Bedside Baptist and just minister to each other. Like, talk about what you're reading to, Read together. Read between the lines. Minister to each other. Lord. See, you're, there you go. Your Thursday with your wife, Des. Exactly. And as for LaShawn, yes, you can listen to D'Angelo. I have yet to meet somebody that made a baby off Shirley Caesar. Caesar. I didn't say the name. Caesar. Jesus. Caesar. No one made a baby off of the, the bright clouds or, or mm, mm, dance romantic to John P. Key. No. Turn, find some good music that speaks to you. <laughs> I mean, like D'Angelo. Silk, we're, we're 90s babies. Yes, so we it's are. silk and it's it's 112 and who else? Mint condition. Good oh, yeah. music that speak to your soul and other things. Just good stuff like that. Not the trap music nowadays. I don't, I don't understand that. 
Y'all, y'all just pray trap for the music. new music. God bless. H Town. All right, Dad. There it is. H Town. There it is. That's it. But yeah, but these are all the things I'm. I'm so happy that people are responding and they're 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 saying because these are the things that you gotta you gotta have fun with your spouse. Like have fun. Real talk. Like life is too short. Life is too short. I mean, when you get past that phase of all right, Joe, they coming out with some. Come good on ones. here. Right. That's my boy. Um, when you get past that that stage of we passed the storm, but we still rebuilding. We still, but these are all part of the rebuilding process. Yeah, it's part of reset. And when you resetting, like I said, you 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 you're being intimate all over again. You're trusting all over again. And intimacy is past sex. Yeah. When you yeah. drink together, when you talk about the future together, that's intimacy. When he can come home after a hard day and lay his head in my lap and I just rub his shoulders, it's okay. That's intimacy. When I can't get my hair washed and I just sit back and talk to him, Amen. that's intimacy. Pray, and then pray, the sex comes. Pray, pray together. together. Please pray together. Pray together. Pray individually, but pray together. Because you never know what your spouse may be going that's through right. on the inside. And there, men, men process stuff on the inside. It kind of drives me crazy because I wish they y'all would learn that we're your help meets mm -hmm. and we're here to help you even process certain thoughts. But men do get into their shells and we can tell when y'all get into the, your shell because the atmosphere changes around you. But even in those instances, ladies, pray for him. Lord, I don't know what's going on with my baby right now, but cover him. Let favor follow him. Let favor go before him. Keep his mind at peace. Give peace to calm his storm. Like whatever's going on. Yeah. Pray for your spouse. Yeah. Because there's a lot going on in there. And I just want to say also too, the world is full of negativity. Definitely. The world is so it's, it's filled with negativity. I mean, as you see, like they, they paint this picture like marriage is full of negativity. Speak life to one another. Definitely. Speak life. I challenge every single married couple. I don't care what your circumstance is. Start speaking life to your to your spouse. Make a conscious decision. Make a conscious don't decision. Say nothing negative. Every, don't say nothing negative. Say Even something. though the negative is obvious. It's very obvious. Speak life. Speak life to that dead thing. Find a little thing and do right. If they done did all wrong, but they got the kids to bed on time, babe, thank you for that. Find the positive in everything. Thank you. Thank you for taking the car to get the yeah. oil change. Yeah. Speak life. Speak life back to your marriage again. Definitely. Because, like I said, life is built with negativity. We go out to work and to these jobs, negativity. Negativity is everywhere. It's time to speak life back into these marriages. Definitely. It's time to speak the truth back into these marriages. It's time to put God back on the throne where he belongs. In marriages. So. So we say all that to let's, say. Let's go back over. Now let's go back over the steps again. Like Mr. Rogers. But the first step. Self-reflection. Confess. What did you do? Ask God to show you you. Yeah. What part did you play in the breakdown of your marriage? Yeah. Once you got that stuff down. Write it down. Speak it out to God. Confess it. Repent Amen. from it. Amen. And he will forgive you. Amen. The second step. Remember what's the good thing about your spouse. Remember the good in them. Yeah. Remember what yeah. made you. All right. Thank you, pastors. First one, self-reflection. That's right. The second, remember the good. Remember the good things. Remember what drew you to them in the first place. Amen. Amen. The third. Have the talk. It's time to talk. Okay, we'll do that. We will definitely we'll, we'll do, that. We'll do that. Tam, thank you. The third, it's time to talk. Thank you, sis. Talk about what you did. Tell on yourself. Tell everything. Leave no room for the enemy to get in. No room. Mm -hmm. Tell on yourself. Confess it. Confess it face to face. Yeah. Put on your big girl panties. Put on your big boy drawers and tell it. Tell on yourself. Put everything out on the table. Everything. Everything out on the table. Nothing hidden. Nothing hidden. The fourth, get accountability partners. Change your circles. Change your circles. Change your circles completely. If that person or whoever it was was involved with you doing whatever you did or is it is a negative 
uh, contribution to, to what you're doing or is building up your pride to the point where you can't see straight, it's time to change your circle. So that means step four has two parts. Change your circle and get accountability partners. Yeah. Get some other married couples to walk with you through this thing. Amen. Get somebody else to walk with you. Amen. People that's going to pray over you. Like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Then we got seek godly counsel. That's right. The, the part two was uh, accountability partners. That's what the second part was. There you go. Thank you, pastors. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. And then um, it was um, seek godly counsel. Amen. See, go to a psychiatrist. Go to a marriage Rudy. counsel. Sister Stephanie, we're going to work on that circle this year. We already said that. So <laughs> we're going to fix that. But You, you got us, Sister, Sister Steph. We're we coming for you. We coming for both of y'all. Seek God, exactly. Seek godly counsel. Get you a, a, get a counselor that's going to help you reflect, confess, repent, turn back to God, and then God's going to turn you back to your spouse. Amen. Amen. Um, the fifth one, it, no, the sixth one, <laughs> thank you, is um, forgiveness. The key. The key. The key. The key to making all this work. The Forgive. Key. Forgive yourself, forgive them, and forgive everybody involved. Amen. Forgive to get your freedom back. Amen. Forgiveness. Um, let's see. Then next is hold on to each other and hold on to God. Amen. You're going to need each other to weather the rest of this storm. Amen. You're going to need each other to weather the rest of it. Amen. That was your biggest hurdle. Forgive. You got to forgive, bro. That's you got right, to Pete. forgive. You got to. You got to forgive. Shout out to my brother. Love you, man. The second one, like I said, like the next belated. one was you and your birthdays. <laughs> Happy belated you and Paul. So it's, it's hold on to God and hold on to each other. Hi, Summer up in Periscope. I'm talking to Periscope too, y'all. Um, hold on to each other. Hold on to God. You're going to need each other. You need each other. Amen, Sister Monica. We see you. And then Jesus. the last one is the last one is date again. Date again. Talk to each other. Do goofy stuff together. Uh, uh cook together. Dream together. Sing songs if you can sing. If you can't sing, sing anyway. They love you. They don't care about you. Yeah, people are really stuck at forgiveness. That's right. And it's because you, you want you want to be mad at the other person. You yeah. feel like you have the right. The world told you you have a right to be mad. You have a right to do this. You have a right to treat that person any kind of way mm. because that person hurt you. Yeah. But God but God said that's not so. That means there that's, needs to that's, be a that's change, the, yeah. a kingdom mindset. That's the greatest opportunity for you to actually show forgiveness. When you see a person down, when you see a person flawed, when you see a person having issues, when you see that your husband done cheated, your, your, your wife done cheated, when you see that they have a flaw, that is the greatest opportunity for you to, re, for you to demonstrate what forgiveness looks like. Amen. The greatest opportunity. Because once again, that's what God demonstrates on a day-to-day, -day, second to second, minute to minute, hour to hour basis with us. Because we are all full of sin. All day long. That's why when we pray, we pray and ask God to forgive our known and unknown sins because we are sinners. That's right. right. That's right, LaShawn. That's right, LaShawn. Yes, it is. We are sinners they all day hand long. hand in hand. Yes, ma'am. So these steps... We often pray about somebody, but hardly for someone, especially during our forgiveness season. That's well, right. that's the whole point of the forgiveness season. Mm. When you yeah. say you, you can't forgive somebody and not pray for them. You right. can't forgive somebody like what Sean said and not love them. It's yeah. just not possible. Yeah. And no matter how much you don't want to, if you say you're going to walk in that forgiveness, you have to. Yeah. Now, that we had some questions that came up and we didn't forget. Um... The first question was when in the beginning that I was talking about um, 
why when I came into the marriage, my breakdown, my part of the breakdown was the fact that I lived in fear. And since I lived in fear, I wanted to control everything in the marriage. And then the question was asked, um, was it fear that he was going to go out and cheat again? No. no. At that point, in the very beginning of our marriage, no, there was no fear of him cheating then. It was just fear that he couldn't take care of me. That he couldn't hold up his end of the deal. So that I, wanted, I wouldn't let him be the man. I wouldn't let him be the head because I wanted to be the head. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that was the disrespectful part that was in me. So it wasn't fear that he was going to cheat. And even after the fact, after we got back together, and I'm telling y'all that, 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 um, that third step, our third step was so deep and it was so long. This, when I tell y'all what a year, a year. Yeah. Just about, we talked just about, about this year. thing off and on for a whole yeah. year. And, and now mind you, once again, like I said, it's not an overnight thing. No. It is a process. Process meaning it takes time. Time time will eventually heal all things. Because sometimes, like he said, sometimes I ask questions I wasn't quite ready to hear the answer to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once he answered it, because he answered everything I asked him, it stung a little bit deeper than I thought it would sting. Mm -hmm. So then we would have to stop talking about it for a week or two mm -hmm. before I could come back mm -hmm. and and talk again. You're right. That talk it out. That's the biggest issue. That was the biggest thing because that confession yes, of sins, that's deep. That pulls at everything that's in you to forgive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back and we had to walk that step over and over again for a whole year. Yeah. And after that year, during that year, I don't, like I said, I didn't look for anything. Would you say facing the facts was harder than forgiving the facts? Absolutely. Yes. yes. It was. It, 100%. Facing yeah. the facts was, oh. Yeah. 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 Facing the facts and facing the truth um, was the hardest thing. Um, and just like what Nikki said. It wasn't a, we some 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 of the conversations and the facts we had to leave right there yeah and come back and and, and and address them at a later time frame and I'm not saying like a later time frame to say not now I'm 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 not saying like a later time frame like oh let's go ahead and handle that a month from now no it still needed to be addressed it's just like but it's still it's too fresh so we would take our time and say okay you know let's talk about this now. This hurts too much. Let's, let's come back to that maybe a couple of days later. Maybe a week later. Let's and come back that, to that. Coming back to that, once we put a pause on it, it was going back and asking God, God, please give me the grace for this. Mm -hmm. I had to ask God, mm -hmm. God, give me the grace to forgive this. Yes, give me the grace to love on my husband still. Because what he just told me just shook a different part of my soul. Amen. So. Get, give me some grace so I can go back and talk to him about this again. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we did. Yeah. And then the things I could tell visibly on his face, certain things that I said to him shook him as well. So he'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, wait. Once he said, wait, I knew we couldn't finish that conversation that day. We had to come back to that. And I got to reemphasize that when you do receive the facts and the truth, be careful what you do with it. Yes. Do not use it as a tool to tear down your spouse. That's where forgiveness comes in right away. Like I said, when you start hearing the facts, you should automatically use it as a seed of forgiveness. Constantly forgive over and over and over again. You're going to have to constantly forgive. And, and forgiveness is a conscious decision. You're going to have to go ahead and forgive that, that person over and over again. And vice versa, that person's going to have to forgive you over and over again. Definitely. But do not use the truth and the facts to tear that person down. Don't. Or as ammunition for a later time frame. So when you guys are, are having a fallout or arguing down the road. Don't say Well, remember, well, you was doing such and such and this. No, no, the devil is a liar. No. You forgave that person. And in those moments... If you need to re, you know, you know, forgive them again, forgive them again in those moments. 
You are to take hold of those thoughts, those carnal thoughts, cast and you are to down. cast them down and bring them unto, unto uh, sub subjection. Do not use that as ammo, man. The question was asked, when do you let, when, when, and when and how do you let God? That goes back to the first step in the process. You start off this process letting God. Mm -hmm. You start off this mm -hmm. process because you have to go back and confess what you did first. Mm -hmm. You have to ask God, show me what I did. Because the first thing that we like to do in conflicts, we love to point out, as in the beginning in the garden, we love to point out what the other person did. Mm -hmm. We love that part. Mm -hmm. We love to make ourselves look better. Mm -hmm. But no, it, everybody in every marriage that has ever fallen apart, both people have played a role in the breakdown of that marriage. That's so good. the first step is self-reflection of you asking God, show me me, That's confess real. it, That's repent, and forgive mm -hmm. yourself first, and then keep on the process. The whole process is letting God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It starts the second you decide, okay, our marriage has crumbled, our home has fell apart, we can either get a divorce or we can stay married. And if you decide to stay married, boom, you just said, I'm going to let God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let God do this. And then you walk through the process. And anytime you allow God to do what he, he needs to do in your marriage, in your relationship, it is always going to be contrary to what you think, how you feel, and what you say. It will always be contrary to that. Always. Because God's ways are the better ways. He can see from, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what it takes to make this right. And obviously, you got in the way and you saw what you did. But now it's time to allow God to continue to do his work in and through you and in your marriage. So you have to allow God to work. It won't work without God. No. And then the second question that was asked is, what if your husband doesn't want to go. And at that point we were talking about going to counseling and what if he's not saved? Okay. So two parts to this. If y'all got married and then you got saved and he didn't, or she got saved and you didn't, however this plays out, whoever the saved one is, you are held at a higher standard by the Holy ghost that's in you mm -hmm. to love on that person. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible even says, Come on here. if that unsaved person, they still want to dwell with you, you don't just get rid of your spouse because you say that they ain't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Now here, here's when you kick up your love meter. Mm -hmm. This is where you love him into Christ. That's how Christ got all of us. Right. He loved us right. into this thing. That's right. So therefore, you love him into Christ. And as for counseling, if he won't go, you go. Hmm. Because you still got to heal too. That's right. You still got to keep growing and grace. You still have to. So you keep, you go to counseling. If he won't go, then you go. That's right. And then you come home and you make his plate, talk to him about his day, and you keep going. Surround yourself with other godly women that's going to pray with you through this situation. Do not nag him. Do not come in that house every week saying you need to be in church and you need to be saved and you need to, and you need, and you need no are you in sin if you give up the process no if no, no you're no. not in sin but but, but, you're, but you're, you're, you're allowing the enemy to do what he needs to do it's almost like it's almost like you're you're, you're skipping a process of um, you know a, a step process of you're trying to recover from alcoholism. But the question is, the question is, why did you give up the process? Yeah. Yeah. Did you give up the process because you wanted to hold on to your unforgiveness? Mm. Was it a pride issue? Was it that you really didn't want to be with that person anyway? Mm -hmm. Like, why did you give up on the process? Because if you went through something horrible and you decided to stay married, why not finish it and just go through the process to have a better marriage. That's good, mom. If you give up in the middle, it's a reason you gave up. There's yeah. something you haven't let go. For me, when we first got back together, if I had given up in what January of 2011, do y'all want to know why I would have given up? I would have given up because I still had my side piece. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's why I would have given up because mm-hmm. I would have been like, you know what? I still got somebody if that, and I don't have to do this. If that marriage ain't toxic, if that marriage ain't um, abusive, if that marriage ain't like detrimental to that degree, yeah. by all means, you have no excuse. You have no reason to give up. You have no reason to give if up you, on the if process. If you already if, decided to stay in. Right. If you want to stay, if, if you want this to work and you want God to do his thing through your marriage. Yes. The process is a choice. That's right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hey, it's a choice. So if you give up right away, then obviously you don't want it. I, and, and, and the sad part is you'll never see the fullness of God in your marriage. You'll never see what, what it, what it could have been. If you give up on the process, you got to work at this thing. For better or for worse. We talked about a segment on that. For better or for worse. You never knew how much worse was going to be. Yeah, we want it for better. We love each other for better. For worse, and now remember, for worse, it never describes what worse could be. What worse could be. It could be your health. The dimensions of worse. It could be adultery. Anything. Anything. You don't know how worse worse can get. So you are to love for better or for worse. Definitely. And so, then another question was like, why does it seem like the innocent party is always the one that has to be the bigger person? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, I, okay, I, I, I don't know I'm doing a lot of talking, but this is my lane, y'all. I think for women, we usually apologize first. I think so. I think For we, the most part, we yes. usually we For the usually most part. bend first. For the We've most been part. first. We apologize first. <laughs> we 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 don't want to be stressed out about anything. Mm-hmm. We break and bend first. So since we break and bend first, um we get kind of aggy about that. Mm-hmm. We are like, well, why I gotta pay apologize? I told y'all in the last periscope, I was telling God, I don't want to be the bigger person. Mm-hmm. If he gonna cheat, I'm gonna go cheat too. I don't have to be that. We get petty, just like they get petty. But it has to do with your heart, heart, because it's not about. It's not a position them. thing. It's not a position thing. It's not who's high, who's low. It's not oh, well, I, I took two steps, you only took one. It's not about that. Just like what I just said earlier in in this segment. Um, about forgiveness. A forgiveness is not about how many times you forgive. Oh, let's count how many times. Well, I don't forgave you eighty times. Mm-hmm. You only you only forgave me six. It's not about that. It's about the heart. It is about what God is trying to get out of you. It's about what God is trying to do through you. God is trying to move inside of you. God mm-hmm. is trying to manifest itself through you. And if you're blocking that. By, oh, I'm not going to be the bigger person. Or why do I always have to be the bigger person? Why do I always... If you're seeing it from a negative perspective, God can't do what he needs to do through you. So and blocking, in your marriage. You're blocking God's So process. you're blocking God's process. I'm talking to some married couples tonight. God is moving. You're blocking God's process. Because God wants to work the thing out. He does. He's waiting. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. God is waiting to move. He's waiting to manifest itself through love and through compassion, through forgiveness. But when you get in the way, when you get in the way, you stop God from doing what he needs to do. And God is a gentleman. And then they wonder why it's not working. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do it. No. He'll wait. Everything is based off of choice. But he even, even within that, God has a loving way of doing it. Yes. He'll still do it in a loving way. Mm-hmm. Allow God to work through your marriage through you. If you call yourself a Christian, oh, I'm a child of God. Definitely. Show it. Demonstrate it. Choose to love. In your Choose marriage first. In your marriage first. Stop showing stop trying to fake it when you go to church. Uh. Because they can while you're on the pulpit preaching down fire, they look over at your spouse and they sitting in the chair like this. That's because your spouse know the, the, the real you. I know the real you. The spouse knows what the real you. What they see, not you. I know you. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. That's a real problem. You got to start here first. Right here. Because no matter what, those kids are going to get grown and they're going to leave you. And nobody will be there but your spouse. Yeah. 
And what are you going to do with somebody that you haven't talked to in God knows how long? Amen. With somebody you haven't dated? With somebody you've been ignoring? Oh, we'll, we'll deal with it when the children get older. Amen. Oh, we'll deal with it when we get out of church. Mm, no. You deal with it now or you won't have anything to deal with later. Amen. There have been Amen. many marriages that have gone on for years and hid stuff and covered up stuff just long enough for the kids to get grown and then they call it quits. Mm. That's crazy to it's live good. like that. You're not living what is it, your best life? That's right. Why give up something right. that could be great for being miserable? That's right. Just for just for show. Yeah. Then they say marry just for show. And they make each other miserable. Yeah. And that's pride. I think that's pride. It is. It is. And I just, I, I rebuke the spirit of just a blurred vision. Definitely. Of blurred godly vision of people who have absorbed negative things in marriage and in relationships. And they're looking at the world and they're looking at these reality shows and they're looking at the TV shows and they're looking at all of these things and they think the marriage is supposed to be like this and it's not like that. And the fact that people have these negative perspectives towards marriage Definitely. and that people feel like marriage is, it can't, it can't be happy. I mean, it, 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 it was, it was built on the foundation of hatred and, and bitterness and lies and this and that. I rebuke the spirit of, of hatred. I rebuke the spirit of just brokenness in marriages, man. I rebuke that. God is real and God can restore marriages. Any marriage. Any marriage. Any marriage. God can do the impossible, man. He can do it. No, he can do it because we think it's impossible. Yeah. It's not, we it's limit lightweight. ourselves. It's light work for him. We limit ourselves. God, God can move in any marriage, any circumstance, no matter what it is. I don't care if it's adultery. I don't care if it's, it's pornography. I don't care if, if, if it's just, just anything, whatever it is. God, God can it. restore it. He can do the impossible if you Ooh. allow him to. Yes, he can. So Satan, you might as well go back to the pits of hell from whence you came. You cannot have marriages, man. No. I call every marriage back to the, to the heart of God. Amen. Every marriage. Amen. Every man who walked out there and cheated. I call you back home. Everyone. Every child who figured marriage is just a broken thing. It's a fad. I speak life to, to your children. To every wife who decided I just wanted to give up and walk away. I speak life to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I speak it. Amen. Amen. There will come a day where we'll walk in churches and we'll see families again. There will come a day. There will come a day where marriages will be whole again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Marriages will will be will be will be people will get jealous by looking at marriages Amen. and they'll desire to want to be married. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I speak life back to marriages. Husbands, I speak you back to your positions. Amen. Wives, I speak you back to submissiveness, but not submissiveness in a position, but submissiveness in, 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 in loving your husband, wooing him to love. And knowing that God has called you for a greater purpose. Amen. Amen. To every child who thinks that marriage is a fad, once again, I speak life to you. It's not. It's not a fad. It's holy. It's what God intended. It's what God, it's a God thing. It's a good God thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak life. Amen. I speak life. I speak life. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I speak life. This was not planned. I speak life to your marriage. I speak wholeness to your marriage. I speak peace Thank to you. your marriage. I, peace be still. I speak it to your marriage. Yes. No more back and forth. Yes. Wholeness. Lord, frustrate the plans of the enemy. Restoration. Reset. Yes. Over and over again. Forgiveness. Lord, shower us with forgiveness in our marriages. Let us forgive time and time again. Day in and day out. Let us choose love. Let us choose conscious forgiveness. Yes, Lord. Let us choose to do the right thing. Let us choose holiness in our marriages. Choose the hard thing. The hard thing. home is hard, but come home. In the name of Jesus, choose it. 
Definitely. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, y'all. It is 10 o'clock. And if anybody got any questions or got anything that you want to say, now is the perfect time. Um, if you want to talk, if, if anyone came in late and want to ask about the steps, it's, it's an open floor. If there's any more questions or concerns or whatever, just whatever, because we here. We believe I, marriage has been our biggest struggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Between the clapping and the throwing of the shoes. <laughs> Praise Sister Pastor Tam, Terry, love you. thank you. You and your husband. God bless y'all. Both of you. Yeah. God bless y'all, man. And I see, I see my boy, uh, uh, Mr. Burton on there. I seen him, him and Tiff. God bless y'all, man. I, I'm, I'm sorry you, I missed y'all. I ain't acknowledge y'all. I love y'all pastors, y'all apostles. God bless y'all. Um, Sister Tam, you and your husband, God bless y'all. Pastor Tam, yeah. God Do bless right. y'all. Right. I don't know. Everybody my sister. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Pastor Apostle Tam, you and your Aww. husband, I love y'all. Um, once again, Bishop Tory. Shalonda dancing. All right, now. You dance. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. God is going to do something great. And, and did, did y'all know, like, we're not on here for, like, all the likes. We're not on here for, like, you, it's, it's, it's funny because me and Nikki will sit back and we'll, we'll take a look at, like, you know, people that, you know, chime in and people that jump on. We don't, we don't even care about the numbers. We just want marriages. We just want marriages reconciled. We want God to be reflected in marriages. That's all we care about. We already know our calling. We already know God called us to do it. Oh, thank you so much. And, and you know what's you know what's so amazing? A lot of people don't flock to a lot of positivity. They don't flock to it. Now we was on here arguing. <laughs> It'd be lit. Yo, a lot of people don't flock to positivity. So we 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 came on this knowing and understanding that people aren't gonna too much flock to this. The enemy don't like it. The enemy hates it. But we know our calling. We know God called us to do it. Not only us, but Bishop, Bishop and, and, and his wife. They know God called them to do it. And God moved on them. And God moved through us to connect with them. Awesome. And we want everybody to connect. Not just us. We don't want to see our just ourselves on here. We want to see other married couples go live. We want to start a movement, an epidemic of just loving and marriages and restoration. Amen. Let God move, man. He is so willing. He's waiting with anticipation. He wants to move through marriages, man. You got a story to tell. Tell your story. We overcome by our testimony. Tell your story, man. Tell your story. You got a story to tell. Don't hide no more. Don't be quiet no more. Move. Get up and move. Write a book. For the <laughs> Thank you so much, LaShawn. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Good. Turn Ratchet TV off. <laughs> in it and of itself it's it's not bad just be careful what you absorb that's all uh we already know that um yes man we do serve a god that will do it just one marriage at a time yes man and we reach out and grab another marriage just like a, just like a, just like a married couple reached out and grabbed us we're gonna keep reaching and if all of us keep reaching god just imagine the healing that could happen with our children we wondering what's wrong with our children that's right sister tam just amen look at all this stuff that's going on and we just take care of our families can't beat that. Love on each other, y'all. We about to get out of here. We love everybody. Everybody. Right, right, right now, we're saying, are there any questions? You better get us now while we're still awake. But we really <laughs> are old people, and we usually be asleep. <laughs> so, while we're awake, should we go through those steps again? If you want to know the steps, go back through the comments. You'll see all the steps through the comments. The steps for the reset process. Go through the process. The process After is worth storm. it. It's After worth storm. it. It's worth it. Yeah. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be quick. But it's worth it. Amen. What's that thing you say? We got to do what now? Listen here. I'm, I'm going to end with this. <laughs> In your marriage, fight it out. Fight it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. But most of all, love it out. Love it out. We love y'all and the love of Jesus Christ. And if there's no questions, you can still throw your questions up there. We will still definitely answer them yeah. even after the whole thing. Oh, don't forget to put it on the page. 
Yes, Sister Tim. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, Pastor Tim. Yes, Pastor Tim. We will do that. <laughs> yeah, we will definitely do that. She getting on us. Um, but we see, would definitely accountability. That's see, right that's there. what I'm talking that's right about. There. <laughs> um, we would definitely have the um, the the different um, steps that you have to take after a storm. You know, and and when when you press that reset button, take these steps, man. Um, they definitely work for us. We're not going to tell you to do anything that we we didn't do or we didn't learn from. Um, by all means, so definitely take those steps. Do a step before you log out. Okay, we'll do all of that. When is the the next session? Well, the next session for us will be next Monday at 8.30, but tune in tomorrow. It's, we're just getting started. We're just sparking it up. Because tomorrow, you gotta see tomorrow. our pastors are going to be on tomorrow at you gotta 8.30, see tomorrow. also talking about marriage. So we're just going to keep talking about marriage so y'all get sick of hearing it, and hopefully y'all never get sick of hearing it, because we're right. going to keep talking about it. So Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays and Tuesdays, 8.30. 30 each night. It's going down. We going to get on y'all nerves. Marriage blast. Sorry. The reset marriage. It is what it is. And it's marriage. Just marriage. Just marriage on blast. Marriage, marriage on blast. Marriage on blast. God is moving, man. It's going to be awesome. Tomorrow night at 8.30, uh, Bishop Bishop Gerard and Apostle Tori, they, gonna, they doing something big, man. God is moving on them. God's moving on them. I speak life to them, man. Sunday church, y'all. I speak life to them. I speak life to them. Y'all should have been in the place. And, 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 and Apostle Tori got... Uh, listen. Yeah, she get her snacks and everything ready on Monday and Tuesday. So do we. <laughs> That's so we what do, I'm talking we about. We do ours on Monday and then Tuesday we be yeah. you know, watching them. So yeah, do that. Yeah. They, do that. Bishop, Bishop, y'all been on my heart, man. God's, God is moving. God is moving in such a great way. God is pleased. God is pleased through 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 your ministry. Definitely. Not just not just what people see at the church. God is pleased in 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 your personal life, and He's manifested of being welcome, being so welcoming to yeah. the broken. God is pleased. Y'all love. So I just want to speak that to, to y'all, man. God is pleased. He's pleased, and he's and he's smiling, and he's happy because you guys choose to follow Him and to love and to love. And to demonstrate that. Definitely. God bless y'all. Y'all y'all just amazing, man. But anyway, uh, join them tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night, 8.30. I think they'll be on Facebook and Periscope also. So Facebook, it's Rock Hope Periscope. I think it's Pastor Tori's page on Periscope. Tori Brown, look for it. Do it. Um, Really? Y'all? I got to dance while you say it. Go ahead, man. You got to say Okay. <laughs> So, we will see y'all next time. Keep praying together. Keep walking this thing out. It's worth it. It's so, so worth it. Definitely, Patricia, we will, we will be praying yes, for you. Yes, oh, yeah, it's at Tori Brown 82 for Periscope. There it is. We will be praying for you, Patricia. Do Definitely. it. Chime in. Tomorrow Definitely. night. Love you guys. Be blessed. Till next Monday. We love y'all. Take we care, you. man. Love y'all.